Hey guys, and welcome back to Mad About Skin. Today, fresh from the Purito SPF scandal, I am gonna be sharing with you my absolute favorite, holy grail, go-to, tried and tested. Those trusted SPFs that I think you should give a second look to and might want to include in your routine. Earlier in the week, we had the revelation that the um, Purito unscented Centella sunscreen wasn't actually meeting the SPF 50, which was advertised. It was actually coming in at around an SPF of 19. That left a lot of people shook and a lot of people's faith and trust in brands in general, you know, questioned. And people were saying, is the sun protection I'm using actually living up to what the bottle says and what I think I'm getting from the product? I, myself, you know, that was a holy grail product for me. I love, love, love the Purito sunscreens. And so I was really, really shocked by the revelation. And so what I wanted to look back is, look back over all the sunscreens I've used in the past. You know, the ones I've enjoyed and work out whether any of them have actually been tried, tested and independently verified as meeting the exact SPF, which is advertised on the bottle or higher. There are so many organizations, consumer organizations out there which do do this independent testing. Here in the UK, we have Witch, which is fantastic fantastic independent organization which test these products so that as consumers we know that what we're getting is as advertised. In the Australia and New Zealand markets there's some really great consumer protection agencies that do this real robust testing to independently verify. So I pulled together my absolute favorite. There are five amazing brands here which I'm going to share with you which I tried, tested, trusted and independently verified as containing the right level of sun protection factor as advertised on the bottle. The majority of these are cruelty free. I On this channel I want to become cruelty free by the end of this year so we're vastly running out of time. However I appreciate that whilst I am someone who prioritizes in my purchasing decision I'm um, having cruelty free products when it comes to sun protection I think the main thing the first thing you should be looking at is that the SPF is correct and that you're getting the protection that's advertised. So I will be calling out where some of these products aren't cruelty free and sharing with you the cruelty free options so you can pick a mix with what you want to get out of your product. Coming in at number one is the Badger Sport Unscented SPF 35. When something says sport on an SPF, it usually means it's for all over the body as well as the face and is resistant to sweating, toweling, and some of the things that might be going on if we're playing tennis or whatever other sports people play. This though is a fantastic, fantastic product. An SPF of 35, which has been tested by the New Zealand Consumer Council. I'm gonna leave links to all the testing below so you can check it out for yourselves and has been verified at exceeding the SPF 35 um, on the bottle. It's a broad spectrum SPF, so it again, protects you against UVA and UVB rays, which is really important because we often forget the UVA, just as important as the UVB, which is what's measured by the SPF. This is a gorgeous, gorgeous, unscented product, a mineral sunscreen, which only has five ingredients. So if you're someone that wants to really cut down on the amount of ingredients in your skincare, you want to kind of go for that clean approach without everything having to be badged as clean, this is a really great option. It cuts right back on there, 94% of the ingredients by weight in here are organic, so if that's something you love, this is just a real holy grail. It's cruelty free, which is a ding 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 from the start, and just a really beautiful product. It can be a little bit hard to get here in the UK, it's more prevalent in Australia and New Zealand, though they do ship internationally, and you can get get it at some stores here in the UK, particularly the online retailers. And I'll leave some links as I will for all of these below. This actually has been used by my brother on his two younger children for years and years and years. And whilst it goes on a little bit on the thicker side than maybe what we're used to in terms of our Korean SPFs, it does dissipate into the skin quite easily. You don't get left with too much of a white cast, particularly considering it is a mineral sunscreen, which tends to leave a much more heavy and thicker white cast than obviously the chemical sunscreens, which won't beautiful product, hands down, one of my favorite SPFs. And actually I've been reaching for lighter versions, but this is fantastic. It doesn't break me out. So it's suitable for people with oily skin. And it's really one that I'm gonna be reaching for. Coming in at number two will be no surprise to anybody. And that is the Neod Survival 30. So Neod do a Survival Zero, which is just like the world's best antioxidant serum. It's a powerhouse when it comes to providing protection against wavelengths of light, blue light, or um, you know environmental pollutants and aggressors just a beautiful product for you know preventing oxidative stress and free radical damage in the skin. They do do versions with an SPF of 10, SPF of 20, and an SPF of 30. I'm a huge believer in reaching for an SPF of 30 as a minimum, and so I go for the Survival 30. I recently switched to the plain antioxidant, Survival Zero, and then added my Korean sunscreen on top. But in light of some of the issues that we're experiencing recently, I've decided to just plump for it and go for the SPF 
30, the Survival 30, which is a beautiful formulation. Gives a slight white cast, it's a mineral, a sunscreen, gives a slight white cast, but nothing that you can't work with. You know, you put it on the skin and that sinks in after about 10 minutes. This gives me the protection I need and has been independently verified. Again, this is what this video is all about. Independently verified as having an SPF of 33. So in excess of what's advertised on the box, which is a 30. That to me gives me that confidence that the product I'm applying is giving me the protection I need. And it's just a gorgeous, gorgeous product to use. You're getting your antioxidants and your SPF all in one product absolutely holy grail. Neod, as with all the Decium skincare products, is cruelty free. So again, huge tick in the box if that's what you're looking for from your SPF. And we're moving on to number three. This is the first of the products which isn't actually cruelty free. However, I do think it's such a fantastic option and such a fantastic sunscreen, it warrants a mention in this video. It's from Neutrogena, which is a really well established and trusted skincare brand. And this is their Ultra Sheer Dry Touch Lotion, SPF 50. Again, a mineral, SPF. This is the last of the mineral ones that we're coming on to. So you've got three really good mineral sunscreen options if that's what you're going for. This was independently tested by a consumer organization over in Australia, which verified that this is in fact an SPF of over 60. The reason that matters is if people are saying 50 plus, that in itself is different to an SPF of 50. SPF 50 says you're going to get an SPF of 50. 50 plus is what um, companies use in territories which don't allow for sunscreens to be marketed as higher than an SPF. SPF 50. Australia, I believe, is one New Zealand, that's certainly here in the UK. You will see this advertised in the US as potentially your 70, 80, 100. That's just because of the different levels of the key filters in it. But here I'm talking about the sheer 50 plus, which I think is more than enough to get all the coverage you need and does exceed, again, really important in testing, does exceed that SPF of 50, which allows it to use an SPF 50 plus label on the bottle. I love this because it's oil free, it's non-comedogenic, which is great if anyone's suffering from oily or acne prone skin. You know, anyone, I have severe acne flare ups from time to time. I do always worry when I'm using a new SPF that it will clog my skin and cause those breakouts. You won't get with that with this. I've been using it on and off. Like like I say, I switched to cruelty free options um, away from this, but I had no problem with the product itself. It applied beautifully. It left only the minimal, minimal white cast, which could easily, easily cover with a bit of a tinted foundation or just allow it to sink in for, you know, 10, 15 minutes before you walk out the door. An absolutely beautiful product. It's dry to the touch, which I love. It's mattifying, making it perfect for people with oily or acne prone skin and a firm, firm favorite for me. Now, coming in at number four is the Alpha H Protection Plus SPF 50 Plus. Again, this has been tested for by um, Australian consumer standards, and so you know that what you're getting is in excess of that X SPF 50, which allows it to use the 50 plus label. I love Alpha H as a brand. It's an absolutely fantastic skincare brand, which their balancing cleanser is like a holy grail for me. It's one of my favorite cleansers of all time. And I really love the brand. You have to be a little bit careful with them because some of their products do contain fragrance, and it depends where you purchase them in which jurisdiction as to the formulation with or without fragrance. So I've left some links so you could check that out if that is something that bothers you with your formulation. A couple of people have called out whether Alpha H is actually a cruelty-free brand. They don't personally test on any, um, any of their products on animals, nor do they expect anyone else to test on their behalf. I reached out to Alpha H to check whether they um, actually sell into mainland China. Any product which is sold directly into mainland China needs to be tested on animals. And um, that's the law that happens. The Chinese government passed that law. And so any company that wants to sell into China has to test their products on animals to make sure it's suitable for human use. I reached out to them and they don't directly sell into mainland China. They confirm that they don't test any of their products on um, animals and they don't sell into mainland China themselves for that. There are some third parties which do sell into mainland China, often via Hong Kong, which is one way you can potentially get around um, that rules and regulations. So for me, it's a little bit of a gray area, but I personally am satisfied that it's a cruelty free company. And I recommend you, you know, check it out online yourself if you do want to get some extra reassurance. I love Alpha H and I really love this product. This is a um, chemical sunscreen. So the ones we've talked about today are mineral, um, usually using zinc oxide or titanium dioxide. This one is using some fantastic um, chemical filters, which means you get no white cast, so it disappears into the skin completely. And I would say this is one of the most hydrating of all the SPFs that I've actually used. If you suffer with dry skin, you obviously want to avoid alcohols in your SPFs. This is alcohol-free and just has a beautiful, gorgeous, um, 
just a gorgeous feel when you apply it to the skin. It's super hydrating, so again, great for anyone who's suffering with a little bit of dryness, particularly in the winter months. My skin, you know, I'm on retinol and my skin does get a little bit dry in these winter months. This can be a really great option. Why I've included this on the list amongst some of the others, there's so many other um, sunscreens, chemical sunscreens, which you could choose, particularly for things like La Roche-Posay do a great range. Why this is on this list is A, because I'm satisfied with its cruelty-free status, but also because this has to be one of the lightest weighted sunscreens I've ever used. So we all gravitated towards Korean sunscreens, which I love, but haven't been robustly tested. A lot of them haven't been robustly tested by third party independent and verified organizations, which is why I haven't included many on this list. This is the closest thing I think you can get to a Korean sunscreen that has been independently verified and tested. Super white, lightweight, disappears like that, and just leaves a really nice, hydrated, slightly dewy, I'd say, in terms of the appearance after using it, but I absolutely love of it. Now coming in at number five is a whole product range, not just one, but a whole range of products. And that comes from Paula's Choice. I love Paula's Choice because they received a little bit of flack recently about their sunscreens. That's because when you're selling to Australia, Australia has some of the most stringent SPF regulations, rules and governance around what a, um, a company can put on an SPF bottle. I think that's great because that's really the case of the Australian government standing up for the consumer and demanding better. I think we could all follow their, the Australian lead and ask for more from our companies. Quite a few companies have decided not to sell into Australia because they don't want to have to go through the extra rigmarole and the red tape of getting their products approved for the Australian market. That's their loss, not Australia's in my book. Um, and I think all companies should, you know, if a country expects you to up your game in terms of your testing, you should up that game to the minimum standard. However, Paula's Choice decided to go a different route and they, um, tone down their SPF ratings on some of their products over in Australia. That caused a lot of concern around consumers saying, is that Paula's choice actually admitting that what they say on the bottle isn't actually the case? That's not the case. And um, the reason that for this is there's two reasons. One, um, there's different regulations govern governing moisturizers with an SPF of under 15, which just makes it easier for companies to bring those products to market in Australia. Um, and that's why a lot of them were downgraded to the SPF 15 and classified as a moisturizer with added benefit. There's different regulations that govern products specifically, specifically around designed to provide um, UV protection. Lab Muffin did a brilliant article on this, which I'll leave a link to below if you are a little bit concerned still around some of this and how it's explained. So I'll leave a link to that in the description box below because that's absolutely fantastic read and well worth it if you want to know a little bit about how the Australian SPF market works. However, all of their products have been robustly tested and do meet the requirements for the SPFs which are on the bottle. They tend to go for an SPF of 30 on most of their products, which I would rather have, like I said earlier, an SPF 30 delivering an SPF 30 than an SPF 50, which isn't delivering what it says. You have full faith in Paula's Choice as a brand. I think they're a fantastic, ethical, cruelty-free brand. And I really do like some of their SPFs. You can pick and choose the ones which work best for your skin type, which is why I've included the whole range, because I do think you can get a, there's something for everyone within that range, whether you have oily skin and want to go for something that's not going to clog, or you have dry skin and you want something that's much more hydrating. You have so many options, and I'll leave a link to some of my favorites below. So there you have it, guys. Five tried and tested SPFs. You buy any of these and you know that you are getting the SPF which is on that bottle. And that's so important to have that trust in the sun protection factor that you're using. My absolute go-to at the moment is the Neod Survival 30. I, um, I've, you know, I've gone back and forth on that product so much because I love it. I love the antioxidants, but I always like the lighter weight, less ashy feel of some of the Korean sunscreens to use. Actually, I think a tiny amount of white cast is worth it for knowing I've got that protection for my skin, which is why I'm gravitating towards that. I love, love, love the unscented badger one. That formulation is gorgeous. Like I say, family members use it on their children and have never had any issues with it. It's independently tested. It's a great body sunscreen, but you can also use it on the face. Paula's Choice, a little bit on the pricey side, but again, sometimes worth paying a little bit more to know that you're getting that protection that you want and to have that trust in the brand. So where you know whichever one of these you choose, or if you've got some other recommendations, please leave me um, a link below and I'd love to check them out. Wherever you are in the world, guys, stay safe, stay well, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Take care. Bye.